Hello, I am Vivek, a cloud support engineer here at AWS Support Site in Dublin. Today, I will show you how to create an SQL Server Always On Availability Group Cluster on Amazon Elastic Compute Cloud. So, let's get started. Always On Availability Groups provides high availability and disaster recovery of user database through data replication. Availability Groups can also distribute read operation amongst members' nodes. You can use AWS Launch Wizard to deploy a SQL Server Always On Availability Group in the AWS Cloud. The Launch Wizard identifies the necessary AWS resources to automatically provision the SQL Server database on your use case. For more information, see link in the video description. There are few prerequisites that you must fulfill before you manually deploy a SQL Server Always On Availability Group. Launch Two Amazon EC2 instances with Windows Server 2016 or later and SQL Server 2016 or later Enterprise Edition across two availability zones within an Amazon Virtual Private Cloud. If the deployment is for testing purposes, you can use SQL Server Developer Edition. Configure the secondary Amazon Elastic Block Store volumes to host the SQL Server master data files, log data files, and SQL backup files. It's a best practice to use a provision IOPS SSD EBS volumes for large SQL Server database workloads. Deploy the cluster nodes in private subnets. You can then use the remote desktop protocol to connect from a jump server to the cluster node instances. Configure the inbound security group rules and Windows firewall exceptions to allow the nodes to communicate a restrictive environment. Open all necessary ports for Active Directory domain controllers so that the SQL nodes and witness can join the domain and authenticate against Active Directory. Join the nodes to the domain before you create the Windows failover cluster. Make sure that you are logged in with the domain credentials before you create and configure the cluster. Run the SQL database instances with an Active Directory service account. Create an SQL login with sysadmin permissions using Windows domain authentication. Talk with your database administrator for details. Properly configure the SQL browser for SQL Server name instances. In this demonstration, I have already launched two Windows Server 2019 instances with SQL Server 2019 Enterprise Edition in two different subnets and availability zones. I changed the host names and joined my EC2 Windows Server instances to my Active Directory domain. Note that AWS doesn't support Windows Server failover clustering on the same subnet. I also deployed a secondary EBS volume to host my SQL Server master data files, log data files, and SQL backup files. The storage configuration might be different in your environment to achieve the best performance for SQL Server. Note that MDF, LDF, and backups must reside in different EBS volumes. Before we can create a Windows cluster and prepare each SQL Server instance for always on high availability, it's a best practice that you configure the networking for each cluster node instance Elastic Network Interface. You must have two additional secondary IPs for each cluster node H0 Elastic Network Interface. The primary IP is assigned to the Windows OS and the secondary IP is assigned to the Windows Cluster Core Cluster Name Object or CNO. And the third IP is assigned to the SQL Group Listener CNO. SQL Server Always On doesn't require a SQL Group Listener to function. If you don't plan to deploy a SQL Group Listener, you don't need to add two secondary IPs for each cluster node Elastic Network Interface. Instead, you can add just one secondary IP for each cluster node Elastic Network Interface. Always On and Windows Clustering require that some ports are open between the cluster nodes and Active Directory domain controllers. I already configured the secondary groups and network ACL for my cluster nodes and the domain controllers. For more information, see the link in the video description. To configure the secondary IPs for each cluster node Elastic Network Interface, I will walk you through the following process. After logging into your AWS Management Console, select the applicable AWS region that will host your always on cluster. Navigate to the EC2 console and then choose Instances from Last Navigation pane. Select your Amazon EC2 Cluster instance. Choose the Networking tab. Under Network Interface, select the Network Interface 
and then choose Actions Manage IP Address. Choose the Network Interface ID to expand the section and then choose Assign New IP Address. You can enter a specific IP address or keep the default entry as Auto Assign. Make sure that you add two secondary IPs. Repeat the same step for the second node. After you configure the secondary IPs for each cluster node Elastic Network Interface, now use the RDP to connect to the cluster node instance. Let's use these steps to create the Windows cluster and SQL Server always on. Open the Network Adapter Advanced TCP IP settings for IPv4. Make sure that you check Append Primary and Connection Specific DNS suffix. Install the cluster features on the nodes from the server manager or run the following PowerShell command. Reboot the nodes. After reboot, now log in as the domain admin. Open command as administrator. Then enter cluadmin.msc to open the cluster manager. From the cluster manager, right click to create a cluster. Choose next, browse, enter the cluster node host name and then choose OK. Choose next. You can now choose whether to validate the cluster. It's a best practice to perform a cluster validation. If the cluster doesn't pass validation, then Microsoft might not be able to provide technical support for your SQL cluster. Choose yes or no and then choose next. Enter a cluster name and then choose next. Make sure that you clear the check mark next to add all eligible storage to the cluster and then click next. When the cluster creation is complete, choose Finish. Note that the cluster logs and reports are located at the following path. In the Cluster Core Resources section of Cluster Manager, expand the entry for your new cluster. Open the context menu for the first IP address entry and then choose Properties. For IP address, choose Static IP address and then enter one of the secondary IP address associated with the H0 Elastic Network Interface. Repeat these steps for the second IP address. If it's automatically not set to online, open the context menu for the cluster name and then choose Bring Online. Open the SQL Server Configuration Manager on the cluster nodes. Open the context menu for the SQL instance and then choose Properties. On the Always on High Availability tab, select Enable Always on High Availability Groups and then choose Apply. Open the context menu for the SQL instance and then choose Restart. Repeat the same step on the other cluster node to include in the cluster. Open the Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio. Log in to one of the SQL instance with your Windows authenticated login that has access to the SQL instance. It's a best practice to use the same MDF and LDF directory file path across the SQL instances. Now create a test database. Open the context menu for database and then choose new database. Enter a database name and then choose OK. Open the context menu for the new database name. Choose Task and then choose Backup for Backup Types and choose Full. Always On requires you to make a full backup before creating the availability group. Now open the context menu for Always On High Availability and then choose New Ability Group Wizard. Choose Next. Enter an availability group name and then choose Next. Select your database and then choose Next. A primary replica is already present in the Ability Replica windows. Choose Add Replica to create a secondary replica. Enter a server name for the secondary replica and then choose Connect. 
Decide the availability mode that you want to use for each replica. Choose either synchronize commit or asynchronize commit and then choose next. Choose your data synchronization preference and then choose next. When the validation is successful, choose next. You can also configure a SQL listener from the wizard. You can do this when you assign the second secondary IP address or static IP address. Note that you can always keep the SQL group listener because always on doesn't require a listener to function. Choose finish and then close. Before we create the SQL group listener, we must provide permission to cluster code CNO in Active Directory users and computer. First open Active Directory users and computers, choose view and select advanced features. Now under your domain, right click computers, properties, then go to the section security. We must allow the cluster name object that we created as my cluster to provide the permission to create another CNO. In the security section, choose add, search for my cluster. Choose OK. Open advanced. Search for my cluster. Choose edit. Check create computer object. Check read all properties and then choose OK. Now my cluster has the permission to create another CNO object within the computer. Now open SQL Server Management Studio and expand always on high ability, ability groups. Open ability group listeners and then choose add listener. Enter a DNS name. Enter port 1433. Choose static IP for network mode. Choose add. Now enter the second secondary IP address from one of the cluster node instances and then choose OK. Add the second secondary IP address from the other cluster node instance. Choose OK. From the SQL Server Management Studio, right click cluster AG. This is the primary replica and then choose failover. Choose next, 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 connect, connect, next and then choose finish. Now the node 1, the primary replica, become the secondary replicas after failover. So now you know how to create an SQL Server always on availability group cluster on Amazon EC2. Thanks for watching and happy cloud computing from all of us here at AWS.